Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, as you can see behind, we have a uh, great game on the Neo Geo MVS Arcade Cap, uh, SNK versus Capcom. I will do a future video on that, but I want to talk about this. Uh, this is something I've had for ages. It's frowned upon by many people, but this is the uh, Sega Mega Drive uh, flashback um, HD. Uh, so it comes with uh, built-in 85 games and it's got a cartridge slot so it does play the original cartridges uh, but um, unlike uh, the Mega SG uh, by Analog uh, this this is emulation so uh, it, it basically takes the uh, information off the uh, cartridge uh, and then dumps that into the memory and then uh, just emulates it really as far as I'm aware but I've had this for a while. My wife bought it for me one one Christmas a, a couple of years ago, and uh, I put it on for a couple of hours, and then it all got packed away in the box. So um, I never did a video on it, but uh, I would like to use it more. I'm going to compare it to the um, uh, analog Mega SG that I've picked up. Uh, so that video will be uploaded on the video of the unboxing. Um, and review and gameplay of that. So I just put this on as just a comparison really um, For you guys that haven't already seen it you probably have I mean at games or AT games however you want to pronounce it um, they've, they've got a bad name for themselves really and uh, They're no longer going to be producing these consoles Because the Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive Mini is actually coming out shortly and I'll, I am hoping to get one of those but I thought as a uh, sort of comparison to the um, analog Mega SG uh, because it's it's HD out of the box and everything I just thought I'd I'd just do an unboxing of this and uh, gameplay review anyway uh, so you guys can check out hopefully check out both videos and just compare them I already know which one's going to be the better one because I've seen the reviews and the analog um, Mega SG is a newer device it's just superior and it costs a lot more money so it should be better anyway but uh, yeah so um, I'll do a better unboxing of this I did previously film this video and I did them both together the uh, the Mega SG and this uh, flashback console I did the uh, intro video but it, for some reason it didn't come out properly so I'm having to film it again so I've already done the unboxing and the uh, gameplay review so I just needed to redo this intro, so uh, kind of filming this or making this in reverse because of technicalities. But uh, yeah, and, and also I did want to do both videos together, like just as one video, the, the Mega SG and the, um, the flashback console and do direct comparisons. But the video was, was coming in far too long, uh, like all my videos do. So I didn't want that. So I'm gonna do them as separate videos. The Mega SG is one video, and then uh, this flashback console was another and you guys can just hopefully view both of them and then um, make up your own minds but uh, it's, it's not a fair competition anyway but it's the only thing that I could I could compare it against so I'm doing that but anyway guys on to the unboxing I have already unboxed this previously when I got it uh, because it was a gift from my wife and I used it for around an hour or two and then it just went back in the box um, and that's where it's been ever since so uh, yeah so I have unboxed this before but I'll do a quick unboxing just to show you I, I didn't do this before anyway but as we can see the uh, pretty big box pretty decent sized box I'll work on the front it says what it comes with there it actually comes with an AC power adapter HDMI cable instruction manual two wireless controllers uh, they are in the box and I've never actually used them uh, because you can use original Sega Mega Drive um, control pads with this console. So that's what I usually do and I actually prefer using wired controllers. I'm a bit old school there. I, I don't like using wireless controllers uh, unless it's for the modern consoles like the PlayStation 4 or whatever. But these old game consoles always wired, 85 built-in games and the console. Um, and on the back, uh, all of the games there. So let's uh, get this open, see what's inside. Okay, so 
console, the two control pads, HDMI cable and the uh, power brick. Get this instruction manual. So I'm not sure how well you're going to see this. But uh, yeah, it's just standard to be honest with you. Um, so just the standard uh, AC adapter, HDMI cable, two um, wireless controllers. Uh, like I said, I haven't actually used these, um, but just as a size comparison, um, I actually have an original Sega Mega Drive one here, uh, albeit three button. Um, you can see there's a, there's a big difference there uh, in terms of size. But generally, I use the original control pads. And uh, here is the console. So I don't actually have, this is based on the Model, model 1 um, Sega Mega Drive, which I don't, I do have a Model 1 Sega Mega, Mega Drive, but it's in a cupboard somewhere, so um, I can't compare it for you. But there's the on-off switch, reset button, cartridge slot, um, the two controller ports. Uh, it's very light um, on the back there. Few details, bits and pieces. The power brick um, uh, output there, and the HDMI. So um, yeah, I actually dug out my uh, Model Two Sega Mega Drive uh, just as a comparison. So uh, if you can see, I've been to stretch my arms out, but. Uh, yeah, there's obviously a difference. Okay, guys, I uh, just thought I'd show you how the games fit into this uh, Mega Drive clone here. So this is a power release, Streets of Rage 2. Not as snug as... Um, yeah, it's a bit loose in there. Not as snug as the... Uh, analog mega sg but uh try an ntsc game this is pit fighter yeah very very loose in there wouldn't want to pick it up by the cartridge not that you'd want to do that anyway but i know some people do that on their channels Okay, this is uh, a repro uh, cartridge, Streets of Rage um, 3. Again, that goes in there. So they all fit just the same, really. And uh, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles or Ninja Turtles. Again, the same thing. I uh, don't use the uh, wireless control pads, I uh, prefer for these old retro consoles. I suppose because of my age, I'm, I'm an old guy, I just prefer the um, cable connection for these retro consoles. So, yeah, this is a genuine Sega Mega Drive original three button control pad that goes in okay. And here we have the Hyperkin six button control pad, which I quite like. And that slots in okay as well. A little bit, again, a little bit of movement there, but uh, this is a cheap, a cheap device. I know uh, a lot of people really dislike this, but my wife bought it for me. So um, yeah, I've got to at least use it. And, and that's why I'm making this video really. As a bit of appreciation, but um, 
but yeah this is it so what i'll do guys is i'll hook this up to the uh, tv and the capture device and uh, we'll uh, capture some gameplay okay guys i've got the uh, clone console hooked up to the capture device uh, as you can see the app games logo um, was displayed uh, here we have the main menu so this uh, has pre-installed games on it um, here we're just going through them it shows you the most recent games uh, all the Sega games there we just quickly flick through I did have a large number of these games on the um, on the actual original Sega Mega Drive back in the day uh, but uh, unfortunately I always used to trade my consoles even to get the updated console so uh, yeah I didn't didn't keep them but uh, got a good selection of games here pre-installed games <clears throat> uh, Mortal Kombat games are there which is always nice to see the Sonic games I was never a big fan of the, the Sonic the Hedgehog games to be honest with you I played them obviously but uh, and here we have some bonus games that are on here now these are generally um, I have actually gone through a few of these previously and, and they're not very good they're just um, cheap budget games really and then we have the recent games that I've tested out on the system okay might as well start with Altered Beast now this was the um, probably well it was my it wasn't probably it was my first uh, Sega Mega Drive game back in the day this was the bundled in game with the um, with the Sega Mega Drive that, that uh, my mum bought for me uh, one Christmas and uh, yeah didn't have a lot of money back then so couldn't really buy uh, many yeah, games so had to make do with this game for quite some time but I thought it was it was really good at the time I really did but uh, yeah you just move from if you've never seen this game before which I'm sure you all have you move from left to right um, you're this guy punch and jump as well and you have to uh, well, you don't have to, well you do have to actually to get in order to get to the uh, end level boss you have to hit these dogs uh, specifically the white dogs uh, which give you these um, power up orbs and uh, if you get three of them um, so we get the first one here Obviously missed one previously, but uh, you turn um, a little bit more muscular, uh, more powerful, able to inflict more damage on the enemies, um, get through the level quicker. You will get another one here, and this one I believe turns into Arnold Schwarzenegger, as he was back in the day. Um, very muscular, and uh, it can eradicate the uh, enemy pretty quickly. Now, if you get the third dog. And the orb. Get this little beast transformation, and you turned it, turn into this beast. So this is the uh, werewolf, or the standard werewolf, for this first level. For each of the levels, each of the stages, I do believe there's five stages. Where you turn into a different beast. Um, there's a dragon, there's a bear, and uh, the final beast in the final stage is a golden werewolf. Um, you can zoom across the screen. You can uh, fire these fireballs, so uh, that's about it, really. <clears throat> yeah, it plays pretty well on this system, it's a pre installed game. Uh, I do believe I have this original cartridge, but uh, here's the end of the little boss world. Torments you, taunts you through the levels, and then you transforms into a hideous monstrosity. Here we go. 
<clears throat> this was pretty similar to the arcade version. I would say that the, the sound effects and the um, uh, voices and, and a few of the um, graphical effects on the uh, I have this on the PC Engine, this, uh, the CD version. I would say are more accurate to the arcade, but the actual um, yeah, gameplay is definitely. Uh, this is the best version outside the arcade uh, on the um, Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis. Uh, the, there are some uh, bits and pieces that let the PC Engine version down, which I will discuss for when I um, do an overview of that. But that's the end of level boss for this game. Completed, finished, beaten. Uh, this. Uh, God or whatever he is, um, evil God, takes the orbs back from you and that's the first level done. <clears throat> okay, so here you've got the options menu where you can just uh, quit from there. So we're back to the main menu. Uh, let's have another look at another game, a classic game on the system, Golden Axe. So uh, yeah, these are the options that you have for the games. You can save and load. Um, you've also got a scan line filter right there at the bottom. Now we'll flick that to on, and as you can clearly see, it's put some scan lines on the picture. Just makes it look like uh, you were playing this on an old school arcade CRT monitor or um, a CRT TV, uh, which is what we all would have played these games on back in the day. Just gives it that more just authentic look. Now I know there's a lot of people out there uh, who don't care at all for the um, scanline generators and scanline filters uh, on modern, well, on these retro games playing on the modern uh, TVs, especially if you've got a 4K TV or HD TV, which everyone's got these days. Um, you just don't care for it, uh, but uh, I'm the opposite end of the spectrum there. I really love putting the scan lines on whenever I can. So whether it be capturing gameplay through this uh, Elgato capture device, or actually playing the games directly on my um, 4K TV, uh, which is generally the um, TV I use for my gaming, which is the 55 inch 4K TV. I will generally have the, the scan line filters on. I just prefer it to be honest with you. That's just me. Uh, I know a lot of you out there don't like that, but it, it's great to have the option. You've got the option here. So I've turned it on, just demonstrating that for you. Oh, these little, oh, I don't remember them being as uh, difficult to hit. Okay, this is a classic game. This is one of those that um, I never really played on the arcade. I played it on the Master System and uh, owned it for the uh, Sega Mega Drive back in the day. I absolutely loved this game. Uh, I've also done a gameplay video of this um, few, several months ago, I do believe, on the Pandora's box. So that would have been the arcade version. Um, so I've done a full gameplay video of that. Um, enjoyed playing it. The sound wasn't too great through the Pandora's box for this game. Um, and as you're probably listening to um, to this gameplay, um, which I'm capturing from the, uh, the App Games clone console through the Elgato capture device, you can probably hear that the sound is slightly off from an original uh, Mega Drive. Now I do own original Mega Drives, and um, I do notice that the sound is slightly off um, through this clone console, but um, I, I still think it's it's okay to be honest with you. If if you don't own the original console, you don't want to spend out for more expensive devices. Then um, you know if you see this going in the in the bargain bin of uh, your local charity shop or local game store, then um, this is the only thing that you can afford, the only way that you can play this game. You want to play original Sega Genesis cartridges, then it may actually be worth picking up. But um, I'm obviously playing it, and I... Sorry guys, got distracted there. I'm obviously playing it because my wife bought it for me for a Christmas present, so, you know, I don't want to seem ungrateful.
So here we have, I've inserted the cartridge, which it loaded. Uh, this is um, Streets of Rage 2. Uh, so this is playing off an original cartridge uh, on the... Um, that I own for the uh, Sega Mega Drive. This is one of my, uh, this is one of my favorite games to be honest with you in the system, it really is. I love the original Streets of Rage game, but this one uh, definitely took it to another level, just made it uh, more of an arcade experience in, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, just unbelievable. I was never a huge Final Fight fan, but uh, Streets of Rage games, um, in particular Streets of Rage 2, absolutely fantastic. Uh, as we can see, this is the PAL version. And uh, yeah, we can definitely notice that, the slow speed. Uh, back in the day, uh, on these old consoles, um, the Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive, if you lived in the UK, uh, you got the inferior um, PAL versions of the games which ran slower and you had orders. And this to me looks a little bit slower than it should. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, yeah, it does look a little bit slower. It should still a great game though. Uh, I remember getting this back in the day when I was at, um, uh, just moved in with my mum actually. We didn't have a lot of money, but I just started college and this would have been in the early 90s. And had my Sega Mega Drive, um, had it hooked up to my TV. Now I had a, an old school CRT TV uh, that my mum um, gave to me. I don't know where she got it from, but. Uh, Never really had a telly up until uh, my own TV up until that point. So yeah, she got me my own TV. It was quite a big TV, 20 odd inches or whatever. And um, it was in, in the um, wooden cabinet. And uh, so it was an old school CRT TV, but the old school games looked great on it. And uh, I had this, um, well, I had my Sega Mega Drive connected to it. And what actually happened was, um, <laughs> It was the day that this game came out, I went and bought it, um, plugged in my, put it in my Sega Mega Drive, went to play it, and uh, yeah, my, my TV, a fuse or something went in it, so um, it, it, yeah, it was just unbelievable, so I couldn't play the game, um, my mum knew this guy that repaired TVs, but he didn't come out until, I think this was on the um, Thursday or Friday I got this game, but it was on the Monday, the uh, Monday or Tuesday the following week, the repair guy couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't come out until then to, to look at my TV. So um, <laughs> we had this little black and white TV, which I think was my, my previous TV that I had. And uh, it was a little portable black and white. And so I hooked up the Mega Drive to that, you know, via the aerial um, coaxial cable, which is how the, um, t uh, the old consoles were connected to the TV, <laughs> to our TVs back in the day, and especially in the UK. So uh, I hooked it up to the portable, and I was playing Streets of Rage 2 on that, completed it and everything. So yeah, all weekend I was playing Streets of Rage 2, this game, on the black and white TV. Um, yeah, my, my brother, um, you know, he, he was living with my dad at the time, but he, he came over and said, what the hell are you doing? You know, you're ruining the game. I said, I couldn't wait. Uh, but then when I got the TV fixed the following week, uh, you know, the big colour CRT, and then put the game up, it was like a totally new experience. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird what you remember, but that is um, that is uh, my memory of getting Streets of Rage 2, which um, had the TV not broken, probably wouldn't even, well, probably wouldn't have even remembered when I bought this uh, game exactly. But uh, yeah, strange. But uh, anyway, yes, uh, looks looks good. Sounds sounds a little bit off again on this game, but um, no, it's a fantastic game. Uh, whatever platform you play this on, really.
I love these new special moves in uh, Streets of Rage 2 as well. Like a Dragon Punch move. You can also land when, when they try, well, when they do throw you, these guys, you the enemy do throw you, you can land it by um, pressing the up and jump button. Just time it. Special move as well when you're cornered, but it does take some of your health off. Graphics, I mean this this to me looks pretty decent. It really does. Sounds a little, little bit off, but um, I'm still enjoying playing this. Just amazing after all these years this game is still um, in my opinion it's still superb um, love the first one love the second one third one I'm not too keen on and it goes for a ridiculous price uh, on original cartridge I do have it on uh, reproduction cartridge um, and apparently there's a, a fourth one coming out Streets of Rage 4 so um, I'm excited about it I don't think it's been released yet but um, yeah, I, I, I mean, whether or not it will compare to 1 and 2 of the series, I just don't know. But I'll play it anyway. I'll be to the end of level boss. Boss music is uh, superb on these games. It wasn't the first one as well. Getting a little bit carried away with this uh, game, guys, but uh, didn't didn't expect to do a sort of whole level. But uh, here we go. He throws you as well, so you can just land that. go stage one done so that's streets of rage 2 so we'll have a look at some other games this is just um i had to I turned it off putting in another game uh, loading the cartridge and here we have zombies or zombies ate my neighbors as it was known in the uh, US uh, but uh, apparently that title was uh, too graphic too adult too mature for the um, the UK and PAL regions so they changed it to just um, to just zombies but um, yeah a lot of people think um, and I tend to agree that the Super Nintendo version is better um, that's because the sound is definitely better but the same could be said uh, or could be true for most Super Nintendo games compared to the Sega Mega Drive games but um, yeah I don't own a Super Nintendo I did back in the day so I've got a Sega Mega Drive really wanted this game uh, instantly I think there's about 50 odd levels in this game and my first experience of this game was on the Super Nintendo back in the day my brother had it now he was nine years younger than me so he was about 
think about eight or nine uh, when he got this game. And I remember he completed this game of all 50 odd levels. Now he didn't get many games because he was just a, just a young kid, but yeah, he was just unbelievable. Um, I think he completed um, Super Mario Land on the, was it on the Game Boy when he was about six or seven. Um, and that's all he does now is he plays games and he completes all the games. He does get pretty high on the leaderboards, worldwide leaderboards. He's got PS4, but um, yeah, he's, he's always been unbelievable in games. Me, I've never completed this game. Uh, it is one that I do want to try to complete, but I just love it. Um, I'm a fan of the old uh, monster movies, uh, you know, The Mummy, Dracula, Wolfman and, and all those um, sort of things, Frankenstein, and you just have to go and collect all the, um, um, is it the victims, um, or the, the normal people in the levels, uh, get bonuses for saving all of those, yeah, victims, and um, you just have to save them from the zombies and the various monsters that are all throughout the level and they've got all these crazy titles you know evening of the undead level two it's just like the old school horror movies you know monster mash movies and, and it, it just um yeah I, ju I just love all that i think the graphics are good graphical styles good um and it plays quite well yeah the sounds a little bit off on here but it always was on the sega mega drive version um, they did release uh, a sequel to this game, I do believe, called Ghoul Patrol, and um, that just wasn't anywhere near as good. I mean, I mean, they tried to make improvements and changes, but just wasn't a good game. But uh, yeah, definitely check this game out, guys, because it, uh, it is a fun little game. You go around, you've got different weapons, got magic potions and, and things of that sort, um, turning into beasts, uh, werewolves and monsters and things like that, make you faster, make you invincible, um, so you pick all these things up, pick these weapons up and try and try to rescue all of the um, all of the people on the level, um, once you rescue the last person, you've got a little map in the um, little radar thing in the bottom uh, middle uh, right of the screen, uh, it tells you under there we've got four victims left to uh, left to save and once you've saved the last one got that down to zero the um, exit door opens up and you can just go through that and then you go on to the next level so those zombies can be pretty nippy and they try and kill the uh, people so you've got to be quite careful baby there we don't want the baby getting killed do we pick up the potion last person and go in the door level complete so again looks pretty good um, sounds a little bit off but uh, we'll try uh, another game that was zombies zombies ain't my neighbours And this is uh, the multi cartridge. So this has three games on it. This is an official original cartridge. So we're trying the first one up just to see that it um, it loads and it does. And this is Golden Axe. So we've already played this um, preloaded on the console anyway, but this is just off the cartridge. These annoying guys still. The enemy in this game, they, they have a tendency to go either side of you and then uh, just just hack away. 
um, or they do that shoulder barge which um, obviously I like doing on the uh, on the enemy but um, they do it on you so we get those little midgets and they give us the uh, potions uh, the health or sorry the magic you do get some other I think, green midgets and they give you the um, they give you the uh, magic so uh, we'll quit out of that it's just uh, a little quick brief gameplay to make sure it works this is the second game on this multi cartridge this is uh, Streets of Rage first one again a great game so we'll, we'll have a little test of this Obviously, you can you can see that the graphics are a lot different to the um, second game. They were much improved. It's still good. Then you can land when they um, when they do attempt to throw you. Music superb on the Streets of Rage games. Those guys in blue can be really um, sneaky, um, how quickly they, uh, they attempt to actually hit you. You can be ready for them and they'll still get the first hit in. Pick up uh, the apples, which are conveniently placed in the telephone boxes, which replenish your health. Pick up various weapons, uh, here we've got a glass bottle that I've smashed, a glass in if you want. And you've got the uh, mandatory flying jump kick. The uh, little drain pipe, so... Uh, you could smack with it. See what I mean about those guys, they just, uh, they just hit you from, uh, from nowhere really. Bats, this comes in handy, another apple. You can throw the uh, the knives as you just saw through at that uh, woman in red with the whip. Here we have the boss. Know the boss is coming at the end of each level because you hear the, uh, the boss music, which is absolutely superb. Um, you've got a special there. I had one that I hadn't used all level, uh, and it summons the uh, my backup, my colleague in the police car with a rocket launcher. So uh, yeah, he fired that. Takes a great deal of health off with this guy. And that's uh, Streets of Rage on this multi-cart cartridge.
cartridge, which um, worked absolutely fine. Here we're loading another cartridge. This is uh, one of my favourites. I know a lot of people don't like this, but uh, I love this game, Pit Fighter. I do have the arcade PCB of this uh, game, but uh, um, haven't featured that on my channel as of yet because I'm having some problems with that, trying to get that board fixed. Hopefully it's not broken. But um, yeah, this is the, uh, the best console version um, of this game in my opinion. Uh, SNES version is absolutely appalling. I might do an overview of that at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the best version. The, the sprites, the character sprites aren't as big as the arcade version, uh, understandably. But uh, it's got, as far as I'm aware, it's got all the, um, all the moves, the characters, the weapons, and, and it does play like the arcade version. Uh, I did do a playthrough of the arcade version, uh, albeit running on the Pandora's Box 5 um, on my channel. Uh, that was one of my first videos, quite a popular one actually, and um, I loved playing through that. Um, this game is one of my guilty pleasures actually. Uh, I know a lot of people hate it, but <laughs> I really like this game. It reminds me of the old school uh, Van Damme films and the old school martial arts films. You know, the Van Damme ones in particular, like AWOL and, and things like that, Bloodsport. Um, but uh, yeah, this game looks and, and sounds just how I remember it too. Again, the sound's probably off a little bit um, because it's running on this clone console and the, the sound isn't great on it, but you know, graphics and everything looks as well as I suppose it ever did. Uh, this game never looked great. It certainly wasn't a Mortal Kombat game. Um, I do think, or do believe that this was the first game to feature the digitized graphics. Um, but <laughs> I absolutely love it. And I might do a playthrough of this um, full playthrough on the uh, Sega Mega Drive at some point. So uh, yeah, you can pick up these uh, these boxes, the weapons, and just chuck them at the, uh, the enemy. Fly and jump kick them. Knock them down, kick them when they're down. I'm noticing I'm doing that a hell of a lot. So this is playing on, on original cartridge. Um, this is uh, American cartridge actually. The other games were PAL release games, but this is the actual Genesis, so the US version of the game. And uh, as you saw, it loaded up absolutely fine. Loaded up, read it fine. And um, yeah, because I do believe that this system, it just emulates the game. So, uh, you know, um, it's making sure you've got the cartridge, loading it in, uh, and then using an emulator to run the ROM, as far as, as far as I'm aware. I could be wrong, but uh, here we're on to the next game. So, uh, yeah, this is just testing to see that it runs a reproduction cartridge, so a copied cartridge. Uh, this was one that was given to me some years ago, so I didn't buy this. I don't really condone or... Um, get into the, the habit of, of paying for, for copied games. It's not really my style, I like the original thing. But this was given to me, so I thought I'd test it out just to see that if it would work. This isn't my favorite in the series, uh, number two is. But um, yeah, the graphics are, are really good. Um, sounds again, a little bit off on this. But um, yeah, it plays really fast, as we can see. So we'll do a little bit of gameplay of this one. Not the worst game in the world. But I certainly wouldn't pay the high prices that uh, this goes for on the auction sites for original cartridge. I mean, like, the last time I looked at it, it was going for, for um, a couple of hundred pounds. And that's... Uh, um, sort of box. I think box with the manual probably even more, but um, I'd be hesitant to, to pick up a copy of this, um, especially if it didn't come with a manual. If it, say it came with a box, um, 
but no man you are, I, I wouldn't touch you with a barge pole to be honest with you. Um, and then even if it came with the manual, I mean, because these cartridges are now reproduced, you know, these copy, copies of these all over the place, um, I just wouldn't be, be confident, especially buying it off of uh, an auction site, I wouldn't be confident that I was getting the legitimate, uh, genuine uh, genuine game and you'd want to if you're spending that amount of money so um, generally yeah if I was interested in buying this in the which I'm not at all um, I would actually get it from uh, you, you know you get these forums I'm going to a few of them from the AG and PC Engine uh, and I've purchased games for those systems through those forums but gen generally um, you get recommended sellers and you know you're going to get pretty much the genuine article I mean I know you can receive this you can take it apart I don't want to spend two to three hundred pounds on something and then have to get the screwdriver out to check if it's the legitimate art but uh, here we go going through this this level it's not a bad game but um, I just prefer the uh, I prefer the second one and the first one if I'm honest I find this game more um, really difficult than the, uh, the first two as well. Um, I don't know whether it's because I haven't really dedicated uh, a lot of time to this game. I do believe I've finished it. Um, I think that may have been through emulation though, not playing it on this cartridge. We've got these big dudes that breathe fire. They were in the, uh, I believe the second game at least. Okay, so I've come out of that, reloaded this. So here we're trying another reproduction cartridge. Uh, this is um, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles or Ninja Turtles, depending on where you're from. And uh, Ninja on this one, the Hyperstone Heist. Now this is another really expensive game to buy an original cartridge and I would like to have this game on original um, so somewhere down the line when I've got a little bit more money uh, I might actually uh, <laughs> when I've stopped spending all my money on arcade um, hardware and software I might actually uh, pick this one up on original but uh, yeah this is a pretty decent game if you've played the Turtle, Turtles games um, and the classic arcade games uh, then you will be familiar with this, but um, or with this style of game. But yeah, this this is this is really good. I grew up watching the uh, turtles anyway, the um, the old school films and the, and the cartoons. Um, but I actually do like uh, the new films as well. Uh, had to watch them because my boys love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so we watched those films. And I thought they were pretty decent. Way they did the uh, turtles be huge, weren't they? But um, anyway, using uh, this dude, I always forget their names, but uh, yeah, he's got the nunchaku, um, my weapon of choice. I actually uh, studied martial arts for many years, I actually taught uh, in the UK. Um, Wintry Kung Fu actually, uh, I did for many, 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 many years and taught. Um, just starting to get back into it now, but um, also learned how to use a few weapons as well. I was taught how to use a few weapons. Um, but generally, you have weapons in Wintry Kung apart from the uh, butterfly knives, or butterfly swords, um, and the um, six and a half point pole. But, um, so the staff basically. Um, but uh, I learned how to use the nunchaku and uh, I got pretty decent with them. It's a quite a dangerous weapon to learn with. Uh, I've got a few knocks and some bruises and uh, hit myself in the head a few times. Um, hit myself in the groin a couple of times as well. But, um, but yeah, it's a decent weapon to learn. Looks, looks pretty, pretty good and become uh, quite proficient with them. So uh, yeah, I had to use them in this game. Has he got double nunchucks there? That's one thing I, I didn't learn how to use, the double chucks. Uh, 
Um, from what I can remember, these levels are quite low as well. Uh, as you can see, there are grab hold of the enemy and slam them left to right on the ground, which I do believe you could do in the um, original uh, original games. You could also throw them out of the screen as well, which I'm trying to do here, but actually working. Really good graphics on this game, obviously. It's one of, I'd say it's one of the best uh, graphically on the uh, um, Sega, Sega Mega Drive. Genesis. Also guys, if you've noticed, I, I turned the uh, scan lines off uh, a while ago, um, so apart from the initial games I tested out, um, and the graphics are nice and crisp, a lot of you out there prefer that, just being flattened by a car. There's a pizza, which is conveniently placed around. The levels which helps you um, to finish your health. Pick up those bomb icons and you can do this special move temporarily spin around to beat large groups of enemy for a short space of time. Yeah, like I said, very long level, so we'll come out of that. Okay, guys, one last uh, thing we'll check is the EverDrive. As you can see, we've got it in there. The cartridge slot is reading it. I'm pressing on load, and it's just not loading at all. Uh, tried several times, as you can see. Um, I pretty much knew this wouldn't work anyway um, from other videos on YouTube. Not sure if a firmware update um, fixes the problem, but from what I've been told, it doesn't. So that is the end of this um, this test of this clone console. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, please like and subscribe for more. Cheers, guys. Bye.